don't even remember what my draft number was. But I decided <laughs> I'm gonna cut to the chase and I'll join the Navy, which I did. I went into the Air Force out of high school. Uh, and the main reason was there was, uh, uh, at the time there was a draft going on and that uh, I was either gonna get drafted uh, well, I was going to get drafted, for sure, all right? So I decided to enlist. Well, if you look at the, um, the common theme in every foreign war that um, our servicemen and women uh, have fought, where they put their physical health on the line, their psychological and emotional health on the line, to serve a cause bigger than themselves. Well, for me personally, I've always admired veterans as my grandfather was one and my cousin is currently serving in the Air Force. I think it's important for us to pray for I mean, just anybody but especially veterans because they're, they're making sure that we get the right to be practicing Catholics. Many people around the world don't have that and these men and women who serve for us have are giving sometimes their lives for us to be able to just be here in Mass and feel it's very important that we honor them for what they sacrifice. St. Joseph was not a soldier. St. Joseph never carried a weapon. Instead, he would have been found with tools like this. But St. Joseph, he was a provider, and St. Joseph, he was a protector. And so even though he never was a member of the military, it was St. Joseph's job to protect his family. It was St. Joseph's job to protect Jesus Christ as an infant and protect Jesus Christ's mother so that they could accomplish their mission. And that's exactly what the military does for us. That's exactly the ideals that our soldiers try to pursue. Our soldiers seek to be protectors and to provide protection for us so that we can accomplish the mission that Jesus Christ has given to each of us. And so for us as Catholics, as we think of following Christ and having a relationship with him, we owe a debt of gratitude to our soldiers who have put their lives on the line so that we can have the freedom to follow Jesus Christ without fear and without worry. And so no, Joseph was a carpenter and he was not a member of the military, but Joseph and the military, they had an awful lot in common. They both provided for people and they both protected people so that they could accomplish their mission. And if you look at the common theme, the Revolutionary War, um, the uh, World War I, World War II, Vietnam, Korea, we were always on the side of freedom. Our soldiers were always on the side of freedom, including the freedom of religion, uh, the freedom that allows us to gather here uh, in special places uh, across America to practice our faith. Uh, we have our, our servicemen and women to thank for that. Uh, so that's why I think it's important that we recognize them as Catholics for giving us all of our freedoms, including the freedom of religion. My grandfather, he served in the Marines, but he was a Navy corpsman. He was with the Navy, then went to the Marines as a corpsman. Uh, he served in the Vietnam War, uh, as well as Desert Storm. And then like, I've heard some sad stories of things he's had to do. And then my cousin, um, he's, in the, he's in the Air Force currently and he's been in the Air Force for a couple years now, and I've heard things from him, like cool things he's done, planes, and it's, it's really interesting. And what, what they do as, as military men is really impressive. We, they protect, make sure that we don't get invaded, that we keep our freedoms, just like St. Joseph protected Jesus, the veterans are protecting us as U.S. citizens. My dad served, my grandfather served. It's just when you have a family member or knowing in history that maybe a family member served in the military, it really, I want to say it really speaks great words of courage, strength, honor, the dedication, the sacrifice they've given to our country. And it's time for us to recognize these men and women. And I think having a family member in the whatever branch, Navy, Army, Marines, um, Coast Guard. It's like we, we want them to know that we back them, we support them. Since we are in this nation, we believe that we are one nation under God. And we should be thankful for all the sacrifice and blessings 
that our servicemen and women have given to this great country. Well, I was going to get drafted for sure, all right? So I decided to enlist and uh, go in the Air Force and uh, uh, figured that that would be the, the best way of, of meeting at the time my military obligations. Yes, it was during the Vietnam War, it was in 1966. And uh, actually I was going, uh, uh, my, my very best friend and I decided we would go in together and uh, we enlisted together and uh, then when it came for that final physical he had to bow out and went in the next cycle but I wound up going in and and uh, had my tour of duty at uh, various training facilities and wound up in Alaska for three years helping to uh, put together a new communication system. I didn't have, I don't even remember what my draft number was but I decided <laughs> I'm gonna cut to the chase and I'll join the Navy which I did and that was in January of 1968. Uh, after boot camp, I was waiting for my orders and I wasn't getting my orders. And I'm sitting there with all the rest of the fellows that was in my company and let's put it this way, some of the places they were going to wasn't so nice. And I really lucked out because prior, before I actually uh, went into the military, I went to a computer school, technical school, over in uh, Trenton. When I signed up, I gave them all that information and, and whatever. And I said, well, where am I going? I says, I just got this small little technical thing. As it ended up, I was so fortunate, I ended up getting orders to the Bureau of Naval Personnel in Washington, D.C. I, I didn't serve in anywhere in, in, in the battle zones. However, it was always in the back of your mind of what could have been, where I could have been, and what happened and uh, we had a lot of fellows on our ship that served there and come back and would tell us and the main thing was you know just being in the military at all when you're overseas and all that uh, you never know how it's going to affect you. you know could that war at that time expand it and we would have to go down through there there was a time in history when christians thought that maybe it was impossible to be both a christian and a soldier at the same time and St. Augustine reminded us of what we call the just war doctrine in the Catholic Church today, that there are times when it's necessary to take active and aggressive measures against an enemy to protect innocent life, just the way Joseph protected the innocent life of his own son and his own wife. Sometimes people confuse Christianity with weakness because of the parable when Jesus tells us to turn the other cheek. But did you know that the parable of turning the other cheek was actually a message of strength in the face of sin, actually a message of strength in the face of an aggressor. Jesus Christ says that if somebody slaps you on your right cheek, stand up and turn to them your left as well. And that was actually a sign of strength, a peaceful sign of strength in the face of aggression and in the face of sin. Because to be struck on the right side is to be struck with a backhand, to be struck by somebody who is not afraid of you, who's not intimidated by you, and it does not respect you. To stand up after you've been slapped on your right cheek and turn to them your left cheek is to invite them to punch you closed-fisted. Jesus Christ was not a weakling. Jesus Christ was strong. Jesus Christ himself was a carpenter, and he would have been a rather imposing figure just because of his vocation as a carpenter. Jesus Christ is not telling Catholics to be weak in the face of sin and adversity. He's calling us to be strong, but to be strong in the most peaceful way possible. And that's what a Catholic Christian does, and that's what the Just War Doctrine proclaims, that we are called to be strong in the face of sin and in the face of aggression, but in the most peaceful way and the most just way possible. And that is the ideal of any good military. You have served our great country and continue to serve our country and for those who have given their lives. Allow the Holy Trinity to continue to pour out their graces upon you in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Allow our world to continue to be thankful for the freedom you have given us and also for all those who have continued to give us our freedom. But I always, always, always thought about me, basically me, uh, I guess they say I was fortunate I didn't have to go there, but then on the other hand, 
I felt as I fully didn't serve my country properly as uh, members of my family did. My dad and three of his brothers are all World War II veterans. My dad served in England. My one uncle was a radioman, a B-17 flying over Europe. Another uncle was serving on a minesweeper who went all through uh, southern Italy and then through uh, Iwo Jima and all that. And then the fourth uncle was also U.S. Navy. He served on a, on a cruiser. Uh, that's about my, I say about the military. I, I, I just wish I could have did more. In the body of the sun and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you very much. The biggest thing that I know of and I see it today is uh, PTSD. They all have that. I mean, uh, very few and as a, uh, my uncles and even my dad ever mentioned too much about it. I mean, my dad would tell me about the, the things they had then, uh, the, the, the buzz bombs, the B-2 rockets that the Germans would fly over and drop on them like that, which was probably devastating. The one uncle was actually shot down over Bel uh, Belgium, and they all still remember that stuff. You could see it in them, but they never wanted to discuss it. And that's the thing I think it happens today too, is with a lot of my uh, fellow legionnaires and whatever, uh, it's still there. It's stuff that you just can't get out of your mind. Well, my dad was in the military. He fought, uh, he was part of the uh, great invasion at Normandy, and and uh, did a lot of work at, uh, uh, again, he was an engineer and uh, did a lot of work uh, getting, uh, uh, getting our soldiers through Normandy and into, into Germany. Uh, I, know, uh, I know the experience was very tough on, on my dad, uh, but you know, he got through it like a lot of other folks got through it. It was, it was a tough time. I'd, I would say, yes, the soldier that's, that saw action, that, uh, and not just back in World War II or whatever, but they see atrocities happen like nothing, all right? Like the soldiers in Afghanistan, for example, see atrocities that happen to, uh, to people that experience uh, terrible, uh, terrible things that happen to them because of the, what's going on there. Uh, the inter, uh, inter brother feuds and all that that go on. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying that we're we're the cause of it, but we see it, and it. I and I can imagine it being burned into your brain uh, forever, and you need some peace there. I think that's what probably happened to my dad. You know, he probably saw some things there that, as a 19-year-old, he never should have seen, and a lot of 19 and 18-year-olds, and. Uh, uh, you have to turn to God for some, some help to, to get around that. These guys will discuss it with you, being you're a fellow military. They can't discuss that with wives, children, whatever. They find it more open to discuss with someone who's been in the military, and uh, which is good for them. It gets it off their chest, they can clear their mind, and many of them belong to uh, different organizations uh, the DAV and things like that, where they can go and get help just to ease their minds a little bit more. Well, the best advice I could, I could give is something that I know from a personal experience. Uh, that's to come back and join your church again, maybe through an RCIA type program or something like that, and get back in. And, and then the thing is, just talk to God about what your problem is. As I said earlier, a lot of times they don't like to talk to other people, to doctors, this, that. Just sit there and say your peace to the Lord and be thankful for what you have and pray for your fellow uh, soldiers, military men who weren't able to make it home. Every day I get down on my hands and knees and I say my morning prayer, say my evening. I thank the Lord for everything I've had, for the great life, just something like that. It doesn't have to be anything really drawn out, any real formal prayers, just something 
that you say right from your chest, from your heart, to the Lord, and one-on-one, -on -one, just like I'm speaking to you now, same way. So being Catholic and being Christian isn't being weak at all. Being Catholic and being Christian is actually being strong in the face of sin and in the face of adversity, but being strong in the most peaceful and just way possible. And so the Catholic Church teaches in the Just War Doctrine that it's our goal and our calling as people to protect innocent life whenever possible, all innocent life, and to only take lethal measures when that's the only way that we can possibly protect innocent life. But the truth is, is that throughout history, there have been times when lethal methods were necessary in order to protect innocent life. And at the end of the day, that is our deepest calling from God, to protect innocent life, to protect the life that God has created. Because we as Catholics believe that all life, all life from the womb to the tomb is sacred. And so that's the vocation of every Catholic Christian. It's also the vocation of the military protect innocent life and even protect innocent life by lethal means if it ever becomes necessary. So my dad is a Korean War vet. Uh, he doesn't like to talk about it a whole lot, um, but we do because we want to recognize him and honor him. Um, and he was from an amazing generation uh, of people that were willing to step up and put everything on the line to serve a cause bigger than themselves. Uh, he came back home. Uh, he started a family uh, in Levittown uh, here in Bucks County. Uh, there are eight of us, eight kids. Um, and his military service was always part and parcel to his Catholic faith, which was uh, part and parcel to our family structure. Uh, they were all sort of interwoven together. Uh, and I think that's really the American story. Our soldiers are very much like St. Joseph. Uh, they're our protectors. Uh, they protect us from harm, uh, protect us from um, forces of evil uh, that are trying um, to harm us uh, and to uh, attack our freedoms that we cherish in this country. So there's certainly a connection between the two. I was originally thinking a soldier praying to like a cross, and then I found this lest we forget statue, which is Jesus holding a soldier. And I just thought it was the perfect statue is the soldier, if you look at it, his soldier has obviously gone through things and you can really see what, how there's sadness in that Jesus is giving him comfort. And I thought that was the perfect statue as to honor veterans. If you believe there is a God, all right, uh, and choose to ignore the implications of that, then, you know, God, God gave us the free will to do just that. But if you honestly believe that there is a God, uh, you, I, I think you have a moral obligation to explore that and bring him in and make him a part of your life. I, I see it, especially in my ministry here, uh, whether it's going to a place like Chandler Hall or Crestview or whatever, where people are either in the final stages of their lives or very sick, uh, how important it is to just spend a couple of minutes with them. Uh, and, and it can't help but make you feel even stronger about your faith and, and that God can work through you, regardless of your sinfulness or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's got to be part of you all the time. And if you make it part of you all the time, you can get through a lot of problems a whole lot better. I'm there for church, and uh, maybe I might give a nod or something like that. I said, when I'm at church, uh, there's no hat, no nothing. There's nothing that shows I'm in the military except maybe a lapel pin or something like that. But after being a member here 35 years, and uh, like I said, with the veterans masses and other things, People know they just sort of acknowledge you, and which that's all you just want is just a little tip of the hat or, or, or whatever, you know. That's a that's fine with me. In addition to being a member of the American Legion for 32 years, I'm also a member of the Knights of Columbus, which is for over 40 years now. Uh, I started out in St. Joseph the Worker in Levittown, where I went through the chairs there, and then uh, oh, about five years ago, I guess it was. I transferred to the council up here at Hennessy. So I've always had my balance of church and state, if you wish, between all that there. And I try to serve the both of them as best that I could through the years. As a Catholic Christian, you don't need to be a member of the military, 
to have a deep respect and gratitude for the military. It's only because of the military that it's frankly so easy to be a Catholic Christian in this country. I mean, we go through um, so many things, especially maybe if we lost a friend or a loved one and we don't know how to handle that uh, experience that we've encountered. And when you're in war or you're, you're in war, um, you're fighting for a country, you're going to see things that is going to impact you. And it can be really hard. And that's why it's so important that our faith continues even in the military. We want the military family to know that we're there to support them. Because even when they come back from war, they need that support by the Catholic Church or even by any denomination, to be honest, because that's where you can find healing. I mean, there's things that we see that we feel like we can never be healed from, but Christ takes those crosses from us. And we really have to entrust ourselves to Him to take that cross. Even Mary went through great sorrow. That's why we call her Our Lady of Sorrows, because she saw the death of her own son, but yet she was embraced by John. And so the church also embraces those who may be feeling that same sorrow and sacrifice. So we allow them to come to us to allow them to feel that healing from our Lord. Uh, I'm a Catholic, uh, and it's really guided and molded uh, my view of the world, my view of uh, the individual's relationship to government. Um, and uh, that's very important that it molds you and it set your baseline. Um, and uh, one of those things also is making sure that they're separate because by separating them you protect both. Uh, that's very important. We've seen countries go down a different path that leads to very bad things. But at the same time, I think the, the fundamentals of the Catholic faith, of loving thy neighbor like thyself, um, taking care of people, seeing God's, uh, God's spirit and God's eyes in every single human being and understanding that even some people that uh, it's hard to see God in them, He's there. You just got to look really hard. Um, and I think that's the important thing that I've learned from my Catholic faith. It really has guided the way I, I um, view policy, my interactions with other people. St. Joseph is a role model because he did what we should all aspire to do. He put all of his wants and needs on the back burner to put his family on the front, um, including r risking everything. Uh, he gave all of himself for his family, and we're all called to do that. Every single one are called to do that for our friends and neighbors. And so if you'd like to say a deeper and more personal yes to Jesus Christ and imitating his father, St. Joseph, won't you say this prayer with me? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, we thank you for St. Joseph and his example to us as protectors of the vulnerable. We also thank you for Jesus Christ and his death on the cross for our sins. Lord, I welcome your Son, Jesus Christ, into my life personally. Help me to imitate St. Joseph as a protector and a provider to those in need. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If you've prayed a prayer like this, we believe that you've simply consciously decided to welcome and cooperate with the grace of your baptism. Now go and make a good confession, and go and receive the Eucharist regularly, so you can continue to grow in your Catholic and personal relationship with God and imitate St. Joseph. on the bench over there to, our, to my left, uh, in honor of Jim Casey. Uh, Jim Casey was a fellow usher of my, with me at 745 Mass. He was there all the time. He and I uh, did a lot to, we were organizing the Veterans Day Masses here. And uh, we were talking even when this was in the process of getting done. And it was a shame that poor Jim couldn't make it. The dedication and all that. But I'm sure he's sitting in that bench there. I could just about see him sitting there now. and. Uh, he was a good man and a great honor for him to uh, be remembered by our parents.